Everybody, so glad to be back with you. Episode 104 today, and we have a brand new artist in the house all the way from New Zealand, Auckland. His name is Ryan Lavalette, guitarist extraordinaire, brand new on the scene. And uh, you know what? I just on a whim hit him up. I heard his song on the radio. I was like, man, he sounds good. So I hit him on Facebook, he hit me back. He's been watching the show, he's been following us since the beginning, and uh, so uh, he was very excited to come on, and we're excited to have him. So uh, Ryan Lavalette with brand new music for you, plus I got a chance to sit down with him and uh, chat a little bit via Zoom, get some of the backstory like we always do. So excited to have him on the show. And uh, hey, speaking of which, we hope you're excited as well and excited enough to click share and uh, also to follow Adam Holly Artist page because we're here every week and uh, love bringing the new content to you. So uh, do us a favor, click share, and uh, keep hanging with us. Episode 104 with brand new music. So I'm going to get us started with a little tune just to get warmed up. Just a quick little thing. I felt like playing the title track off my third album today, if you don't mind. Featured the one only Rick Braun on the original. It's called Escape.
goodness, ladies and gentlemen, just a little bit of escape to get us started on a Wednesday. So as I mentioned, we have brand new music from Ryan Lavalette. But before we do that, just want to remind you, if you want to support the show, we make it real easy. Click that link in the description. It'll take you to PayPal, Cash App, Venmo. You can also get to my website uh, to grab any of the projects. And, uh, of course, you can do stars through the Facebook portal as well. And uh, also make sure you uh, head on over and grab uh, Ryan's project as well. It'll be coming out in uh, April 22nd. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in this interview right here. Hope you enjoy a little bit of Ryan Lavalette. Shout out to Ryan. Thanks so much for coming through. And you know what time it is. It's time to bring in my lovely wife, Kat, with the Cat Cam. Hey. Hi. How is it going? It's going well. How are you? 
I'm doing very well. Always nice to see you. You too. You look cute in that shirt. It's another one. This is two weeks in a row of new shirts. It's new. I <laughs> yeah, I from figured, I was like, I feel like I haven't either seen that or I mean, seen it in a long time. Let me pop the collar a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, no, this is another new one you got me for my birthday. Cute. And, uh, yeah, you know. You know, I didn't notice them because out. I got you a lot. Of, I got him a lot of shirts you for did. his birthday. Well, I needed it. Like, I needed it. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I was like, I don't know if this is like from the birthday collection. Right, or, right. But no, it, looks it is. Cute. Well, thank you. Well, you too. I'm enjoying the orange. Oh, thank you. It's kind of some fall colors, <laughs> even though we're in spring, but that's okay. This is also a spring color. Is it? Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> We well, don't have to take spring so and summer, and yeah. then you can do you know fall. Well, you don't have to well take offense like, to it, Gaff. I'm not taking offense. I saw your face. You were like, <laughs> 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 well, shout out to Ryan and uh, yes. man, uh, multi instrumentalist too, know, to play right? guitar, piccolo, bass, and saxophone. He's putting us all to shame. <laughs> I mean, I do it in the studio all the time, but I haven't yet incorporated it in the show. It it's kind of reminds me a little bit of Vinny, you know, Vincent and Gala. You yeah. know, he's up there, he's playing guitar, he's playing sax, he's singing, he's playing the drums. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God. So Yeah, and I tell you all the time, I tell him all the time that he, I guess I haven't sang on the show in a really long time, but Are you going to talk about the bass? No, oh. the keyboard. Oh, but I thought you were going to say, because you used to say back in the day when we were dating, you liked how I grooved when I played the bass. Yeah, I do, actually. Or were you though. just hitting on me? <laughs> <laughs> No, I do. It's okay. like because it's different. It's a different feel. You have to have like a different attitude. Yeah, it's a different and role. And so watching you play bass versus guitar is just very different. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I kind of like that. Hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> but yeah, that was like crazy. I wasn't expecting that to see that, well, you know, him playing hey. the, all those instruments. It's crazy. <laughs> well, we will see him in a few weeks down at Seabreeze. Actually, we play the same day. He plays a little bit earlier. Um, but uh, also, as if you know, you just heard, but I'll reiterate it. His project comes out the day before his show at Seabreeze, so make sure you grab it. Comes out April twenty second. Oh, also, Aren't you I not going to Seabreeze? Well, yeah, that's a show with uh, Lindsay and Lindsay. I. So yeah. I won't see him. You'll see him. I'll see him. <laughs> well, you're still decided. You said you may come and hang. You're oh yeah, that's right. Because of the run. Yeah. Because we have some stuff before Seabreeze. Before and after. And after. Yeah. It's like uh, the Wheel of Fortune, before and after. <laughs> anyway, So maybe I will see him then. Well, the other thing I wanted to announce is you probably already noticed this is a pre-record. Reason yes. being, I am currently probably in a car driving from Philadelphia Airport to Reading, Pennsylvania. Because um, on the way to Burke's Jazz Festival. So very excited. So I hope to see you all tomorrow. Uh, Thursday is the Chuck Loeb Jam. Friday is the anniversary show. Friday night, I'll be at the jam. Um, Saturday, I'll be at the jam. And then Sunday is the Nick Colleone tribute. So uh, a lot of music this weekend. Very excited about it. And um, and then we'll keep rolling from there after Burks. Um, you guys have been asking, and we deliver. We're coming back to the Cleveland slash Akron area Saturday night, April 16th at Blue Jazz. They just started doing shows a few months ago. So excited to be back there. We're debuting for the first time at Middle C in Charlotte on Sunday, April 17th. There's only one show at 6 p.m., so grab your tickets for that. Coming back to St. James, always fun to play there in the ATL. And then, uh, as Kat mentioned, there's Seabreeze. Then we're coming to Vegas for the first time in about eight, nine months to the City of Lights. Um, and then finally the Lyman Center before going to the DK Cruise. So uh, very excited. A lot of fun dates coming up. So uh, going over to Adam Holly Artist page, get on the mailing list. Follow Adam Holly Artist page on um, Facebook. And we hope to see you all out on the road. Hope to see you out on the road. Yeah. And we have a ton of pictures. We actually were supposed to show them last week. And Kat got a little mad at me. I said, no, let's save them. <laughs> Because well, we because had so, so much many to talk were about. Asking, and I'm like, oh, we keep well, putting our pictures off, and people are like, oh my <laughs> gosh, we want to see them. Well, last week we had six shows and three nights to talk about it. That's Norfolk. true. Um, and so many friends in the house, so that was mm -hmm. awesome. So we saved these pictures, as we mentioned a couple weeks ago, um, during spring break. We didn't want, um, you know, Adam Jr. 
just sitting around and uh, yeah. you know staring at the wall. So we had a few activities <laughs> planned for him, and Kat came up with this one. It was such a great idea. We went to the SoFi Arena where the L.A. Rams and the L.A. Chargers play. It's the new NFL arena here in Los Angeles, and uh, it's actually very close to my church. Yeah, um, it's like right around the corner. But gorgeous. Oh, my goodness. State of the art. Um, really incredible. So we did a stadium tour, and mm -hmm. uh, we got some pictures from that. And you said you, this actually popped up on your Instagram feed, right? Isn't that how well, you uh, yeah, came across it? Well, yeah, I follow a bunch of stuff. Um, there's one called L.A. Bucket List, which is really cool because... Even having grown up like in LA and greater areas of Los Angeles, there's mm -hmm. still so much stuff that you don't know about or new things that have come along that. Mm. And especially now, having, you know, living in the pandemic, there's a lot of things that either businesses or restaurants or new businesses have um, come up with to do safely, like outdoors. Yeah. Um, so it's been really, really cool. And that's really where it came about is during lockdown it was giving information on a lot of things that you could do outdoors either with like a small group or just your family or even if there were other people it still was safe because it was outdoors yeah um and so you know they just have continued with the page and um i saw it pop up and it was a stadium tour for SoFi. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is so cool. We could take Adam Jr. And um, we've really been trying to uh, get him to hang out with more people because, I mean, it's been really tough just trying to social distance and still have some kind of semblance of a life. Yeah. And so, um, so his friends were very selective, just like with our friends, you know, uh, that are vaccinated to be able to be safe to hang around with in a in a close setting. So one of his friends from his basketball team, yeah, were like, hey, you know, you want to come? He was on spring break the same time, even though they go to different schools, and uh, it was just fun. His dad dropped him off in the morning, and we took the drive, and we had like just a really fun day. And they it had was a, a really blast, good time. and we got some great pictures. So let's throw those up here. Yeah. So this was. I mean, talk about a view. This is what we walked into. <laughs> this was the first thing we saw after going through security and everything. Um, it's very interesting. Um, there's a lot of unique things about this arena. Number one, where you see where we're standing is more or less ground level. So they actually built the stadium into the ground so that it didn't rise above ground level too high because the stadium is very close to LAX so they couldn't have something tall when all these airplanes are trying to land so you actually are kind of if you can kind of imagine where we're standing is ground level and you're looking down into the ground where they dug in order right. to make the field so it's kind yeah. of crazy kind very, of crazy very unique um so and yeah this they, um I forget what they call it the the, oh, the 360 where, screen. Yes, it's the crazy. 360 screen. They said that you'll never find it in another stadium around the world. It has like over a million LED lights. And then the um, screen, you can see, obviously 360, from anywhere you're sitting or standing in the stadium. And um, it's like something like close to a million pounds or something like that. Um, they had to like bring a crane to like drop it down and then build while they like had it in that spot and like it just was so cool learning about all of the little ins and outs of the stadium yeah. and then of course you know having uh the education of how it was built down into ground i had no idea <laughs> until we got there and i said oh yeah that does make sense <laughs> it's crazy yeah so this is us. Uh, this is at the 50 yard line, I think. I see about one third of your face or one quarter. Well, because I just wanted to get the boys. They were yeah. like in a deep conversation. They're so cute. That's funny. And so right in the middle, that's Corey. And then uh, a little to his right is uh, Junior. And uh, yeah, they really enjoyed it. They uh, were taking it in for sure. And what seats were these? These were the... Um, they name for it um but it was like a club it was like a club seat where you have nicer seats and then you also have a buffet and drinks available to mm -hmm. you um so it's kind of like a suite type of thing where um they had a certain number of suites that you can't block off or reserve so they're available for every game and if you want to purchase a specific game you can right. you know get these box well, seats so it's pretty some cool stadiums there's it's really hard to get um 
box seats or suites because a lot of people obviously who have the money or just uh, famous people, they basically buy them for the entire year or they buy them for two or three years and you really don't have the opportunity to enjoy it. And so for this level that we're on, none of these suites could be uh, bought or even rented you know, for a certain amount of time. That way everyone is able to have the opportunity to use it you know, throughout the year. But there is another level where people do purchase those or they uh, lease them for a certain amount of time. So those ones are a little different, but these yeah. ones, it was pretty dope though. No, it was very cool. And then this is the uh, inside. Now this would look very familiar to me being in on the inside, although I did, um, two arena tours but it's very similar these kind of they all look the same just endless hallways and it's like where am i you know so <laughs> fortunately we had a guy but this is us in the bowels of the arena uh, or the stadium i should say and uh, on our way to the field yes and there is the entrance to the field so actually it looks like cat you took this you had already gone out to the field yeah but this is where they're coming out so the tunnel so the tunnel run where uh the players come and they're running from their locker room and the tunnel that yep. we just saw as adam set the bowels and so you come through and you run out on the field it was really really cool no, it was awesome and then here's junior doing his uh getting his 40 yard dash time <laughs> and he had a pretty good time um his buddy Corey that was there is very fast probably the fastest player on their basketball team and junior was only like a, a tenth of a second slower um he got a re he had a really good time he's, yeah he's looking like olympic form right there <laughs> Here's me and Junior getting a pick. Yeah. And uh, they had a lot of fun, too. They were throwing the ball around. They tried a couple field goals. So um, here they are. They had these throwing drills. This was a lot harder than, than it, it looks. looks. Yeah. I saw a bunch of people whiffing. I was like, how hard could it be? I went up there and missed terribly. <laughs> so it's And there was like this 75-year-old lady that went yeah. and she made all of her yeah. throws. <laughs> I was like, what in the world? But yeah, it definitely does look harder the, or it, it is harder than it looks because yeah. it looks super easy because it's not you know like placed very far away from you but um yeah it was hard. the other thing that was interesting to me is that the field actually when you were on it to me felt smaller than it looks on tv yeah like on tv the field looks just massive maybe it's the camera angles when i was on the field it seemed like oh, 100 yards that's not so bad i could i could run down the field <laughs> of course if that's without somebody chasing you so i exactly. guess it's a little different but, and then um, too, it's empty. I mean, you see all of the seats. That's true. But it's uh, it doesn't have that magnetism as if you were to see people filled in all of those seats. But it just was like it just was amazing to be down there. It was yeah. really cool. No, they did a good job. And and the other thing I appreciated, it didn't seem like there were really any bad seats. Even when we, you know, were up in the higher sections looking down in the field, you still had a nice view. So um, mm -hmm. you know, it's pretty cool. Um, so this was inside the locker room, which was kind of cool. You got a chance to see how, you know, where the players would hang out before and after the game, halftime. Yeah. And I think we got a couple more. Mm -hmm. Yep, there they are. So they had like little cubbies, and then of course I'm 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 sure when uh, the players are actually in there, they have um, labels and everything like with their names on them, and then their jerseys and and things that they request are hanging and, and stacked in their uh, cubbies, but they have safes there, which was really cool. And I never really thought about that, of them having safes because, <laughs> you know, Adam, like you said, the players, they come to the games, you know, dripped in their diamonds yeah, or, yeah. you know, even their wedding rings or just certain, you know, luxury or sentimental things that they have. You know, even though you're with your teammates, there are other people that roam around in the uh, locker rooms, like other employees and stuff. So, well, the other thing too is that you may be my teammate. That doesn't mean I trust you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> with my, well, yeah. With my jewelry or my chain. That's or very true. Whatever, yeah. So know? I was like, oh yeah, it does make sense. There's safes in here. <laughs> right. No, it's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. The other thing, um, I think we have one more. Oh. Oh, that's us. And you guys see, it still has the Super Bowl emblem. You and, beat uh, me to it. That was going to be the <laughs> next thing I said. That was really cool because they still had the field just like it was Super Bowl Sunday. So it was just really, really cool to see that. Yeah, let me see if uh, I think one of these pictures we might be able to see it. Oh, here we go. 
So, yeah, uh, closest to us is the Rams logo. It's hard to see, but at the other end, it still had the Bengals logo. And then in the middle of the field, it still said Super Bowl and then all the Roman numerals. I forget which Super Bowl it was. but um, Yeah. No, it was pretty cool. But it was really, really cool. But that, I mean, I, I, and that's why I want to put this first picture back up. It's that initial impression of just walking in was pretty incredible yeah um so no it was fun you know we had a little bit of traffic on the way home but it was totally worth it uh, we got caught in a little afternoon drive but um but no it was very fun and, very uh, fun and the boys had a great time i mean i had a great time and i have to say like uh it's not something i think about regularly about going to a uh, nfl game yeah but this made me want to go to an nfl game it's like it man, did. this is it's a really cool environment and they had um the other thing that was enticing to me too is you know it's kind of the stereotype of stadium food is kind of like blah like they had some really really cool restaurants oh my gosh yeah it was so dope i mean if you know anything about southern california especially la itself it, there is just a melting pot of cultures here, so there's so many different types of food. But since we're right next door to Mexico, of course, we have like the best Mexican food. So there's a street and area in downtown Los Angeles called Overa Street, and you just get the most amazing, authentic Mexican food. Mm -hmm. So they kind of um, impersonated that in the stadium, and it's called Overa Street, and you get like all different kind of Mexican food. I thought that was super cool. Yeah, I was like, this would probably be where I would be in line getting something to eat if we came to a game. Right, totally, <laughs> totally. No, yeah, and, and also they got a good team, so you know, uh, yeah. you know, Super Bowl champs. We're gonna see if they can repeat. Repeat. So uh, you know. I know, yeah, and the it Chargers, just was a blast. Chargers are good too, so yeah, maybe we might have to go to a game. We used to try to go to at least one Laker game. This year, uh -uh. It, it was not worth the money. It is not. <laughs> no, the Lakers just. And even though they were struggling mid-year, we were thinking about still going. And then one of the games we were maybe going to go to. We thank goodness we didn't go. They lost by like forty <laughs> or something. And uh, ugh. Yeah, Don't it's get me started. pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah. You know what is so crazy? I wish I had this photo. Maybe we'll show it next week. Is because, you know, we go to a game every year. Adam Jr. just loves it. Um, Adam really, you know, spoils the family. We get very, very good seats. And uh, we just have a great experience. And so the last time we went was at the end of February of 2020. And every time I come across that picture when I'm looking at my phone, I'm just cringing because I'm like, we had no idea what we were running into. And we're in this huge center with all these people <laughs> and had no idea like the COVID was just like running rampant and we didn't know at that time. Well, and also <laughs> Junior, man, what a difference, you know? I mean, what that was two, two years ago? Yeah. Three? Yeah. So he's growing like what four inches, five yeah. inches. So he looks like you know. He just, looks like a little baby in yeah, those photos. Like kid, yeah, you know. So he still has his little baby fat, you know, in his cheeks and everything. Yeah. Well, but just in our trip to Norfolk and back, I felt like he grew half an inch. Yeah, he. We got I back. Did. I was I, like, I felt that way too. Because we had to kind of like squint to see he was taller than you. He's he's just taller than you now. <laughs> it's not even like we don't need he to is. like. He is taller than you me. Know. And it's so sad, but I'm actually really happy because I want him to be tall <laughs> because I'm very short. I have a few short family members, but then um, I'm like the shortest one. So I was really hoping that he would not get my genes. <laughs> so well, we want your we want your athlete genes. Just yeah, not you your want the <laughs> you want the athletic genes. But yeah, I'm hoping that he really like grabs a hold of like your Scandinavian genetics and just is super tall and. But not, my two, but not my two left feet. No. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? It's crazy. <laughs> so, but yeah, so that was, uh, I guess that was almost three weeks ago, but um, uh -huh. there were such good pictures. We wanted to make sure and share it with you yeah. guys. And, uh, because we did, I remember we did tell you guys what we had been up to and we promised photos. So hope you enjoyed them. And if you're ever in LA and you're looking to do something or if you have if you're here in Southern California and you have people coming in from out of town, I definitely would recommend it. It's very affordable. Um, the lowest package is $30 and then 40 and then 50. 
So, and then the tour is about an hour long, and then you can stay on the field for, you know, up to an hour, however, because on your, your badge that you get through security, it gives you, like, a time that you have to leave, but the amount of time that you spend on the field, you know, it could be 30 minutes, it could be 45 minutes, so it's, you can really soak it up and have a good time. And they also do um, stadium tours like that with the Dodgers. I believe the Angel Stadium, too, but we don't want to go see the Angel Stadium. Ah. <laughs> You're such an Orange County hater. We have so many Dodgers dear friends. Dodgers all day. We have so many dear friends in Orange County. Blake Aaron and uh, Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't mean that we have to go see the Angels. Oh, okay. But yeah, Dodger Stadium, super cool. You're funny. You're funny. <laughs> no, it was fun. And went to the gift shop, so I am yes. ready for, uh, I forget the name of the night, but there's a theme night on the cruise I think where... it's a rep your hometown. Yep. So mm -hmm. I got my Rams jersey. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> Even though I'm not from L.A., but I've been here 20 years. And I just said, when I moved here, I said, I'm switching everything. I'm switching right. teams. I'm, I'm, I'm all L.A. all the time. So Dodgers, <laughs> Lakers, yeah. um, now Rams. Of course, the Trojans, because I went to USC. Mm -hmm. um, hockey, I, I, don't, I haven't really gotten into. But um, yeah. big, big time Lakers, Trojans. Um, Dodgers yeah. and now Rams definitely enjoy. Well, yeah, definitely. I mean, and then being from here, uh, always have been a Dodger fan, always till I die. Um, Lakers because of you and Adam, but I've always loved Lakers. And then football, I never really. I mean, since we didn't have a football team <laughs> up until recently, yeah. um, I really liked the New York Jets when I was growing up, just Ugh. because. Sorry. I wanted that. to be a New York Jets cheerleader because I was a dancer growing <laughs> up. So I always wanted to move to New York to do theater. And I was like, well, if I move to New York, I could be a Jets cheerleader. I could do that in the day. <laughs> 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 but, um, but yeah, no, definitely, definitely all L.A. teams for sure. Now that we actually have a football team. Yeah. <laughs> Rams. Go Rams. Go Rams. Rams house. Who's out? <laughs> Rams house. <laughs> so it was fun. It was really fun. I had a good time. Well, awesome. Well, you got anything else for us, Kat? Um, I don't. I thought I had a few um, Ask Adams carried over from last week. Either I can't find them or we already had gotten to them. So okay. I'll figure it out. If I end up finding them, then we'll have them for next week. Well, yeah. And uh, make sure to drop them in the comments or save them for next week. And we will yeah. make sure to get to it. We'll be back live next week. Um, but thanks for hanging in with us for the pre-record. As I yes. mentioned, I am en route to uh, Burke's Jazz Festival. So we'll hope to see you all out um, this weekend. Uh, I'll be playing every day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of week two of Burke's. And uh, so uh, very excited. So, uh, but yeah, we'll see you all live next week. So thanks so much, honey. <laughs> You're welcome. See you next week. Bye. And a huge thanks to Ryan Lavalette for coming through with the incredible performance. Um, we'll remind you real quick, if you want to support the show, we make it real easy. Just click that link in the description. PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, um, Stars, of course. Make sure to grab Ryan's record when it comes out April 22nd. And uh, that's all we have for you for today. We'll be back live next Wednesday. Thanks so much for coming through to episode 104. See you next week for 105. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.